I got a new part for the Visibat, and it was SLM 3D printed by PCBWay. The Goliath can heat up to 550 degrees, as you can see here, here, and here. The problem is the silicon sock that is rated to 300 degrees Celsius, as mentioned here. Unless you wrap up the hot end in some ceramic fiber or high-tone glass fiber wool with a layer of captain tape around. Or you get a heat shield. This is the OG heat shield, the first one for the Visibat, made by Smallboy on printables. The idea is to cover up the heat core with a 10mm glass fiber sleeve with a titanium sort of cage around just to hold it in place. Same heat shield, different finish, made by RadiotBot 3D. This one is made by Vest 3D and it's available on the Visibat GitHub or Melo 3D official store. And finally, I'm gonna finish with my own designs, so here they are. If you want to get one of those heat shields, you will find links in the description box below. As you can see, here I have all of them made out of resin because I had to check the way they fit before I get mine, in case you choose one of those I designed and you don't have a resin 3D printer, I made a compatibility checker that you can easily 3D print in FDM. I don't know if you can see it on camera how close it is, but doesn't touch anything. And the top of the checker is sitting flat on the other end, which means everything okay. In case your nichrome wire touches the checker, you will have to bend it in a different way. Be careful, it's easy to break it. Since I have the Visibot, I had to bend it three times in different ways, so mine just cracked like a nut, but still works. To use the heat shield, you will need a 10mm glass fiber sleeve, and this one has a thickness of 0.4mm and is rated to 600 degrees. I need to cut holes for the nichrome wire and the temperature sensor, and instead of using a pair of scissors, I'm gonna try to laser cut them with this whole laser machine I built a few years ago. To hold the glass fiber sleeve in place, I made this part that can also be 3D printed in FDM. As mentioned before, it's SLM 3D printed, and it's the first time I have something 3D printed that is neither a polymer or resin. And I asked them three different materials, titanium, aluminum, and stainless steel. This one is the heat shield number one. This is the very first design I sent them, and I choose titanium. This is the first time I have an SLM 3D print in my hand, and I can tell you that is truly impressive. Here the footprint, I made it in a way to reduce contact and heat transfer. I also thought it would be heavier than that, it's supposed to be something like 6 gram according to Fusion, but we will check that out. Heat shield number 2 should be aluminum. Yep, that was the aluminum. I like the color. Pretty rough, compared to the titanium one. But I like it. This thing is too light. I can barely feel its weight. That's crazy. Okay, the last one, the stainless steel. That's a lot of weight here. <laughs> I also really like this one. It's wonderful. Same footprint as the titanium one. It's really confusing how rough and sharp it is at the same time. That's something I never saw before. I'm really impressed. I'm gonna repeat myself, but yeah, you did a great job, that's crazy cool. If you are wondering about their weight, the titanium one is 6.2 grams, pretty close to what I got in Fusion. 2.1 for the aluminum, and the last one, 13.4 for the stainless steel, and would be 7.3 if it was made out of titanium. All three of them side by side, so you can have a look on their textures, colors, and sharpness.
As you can hear, it's actual metal, so I'm gonna try polishing them to match the finish of my tool head. In the meantime, I'm gonna take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is PCBWay. On their website, you can find PCB prototyping, injection molding, laser cutting, CNC machining, and 3D printing. Upload your STL file, select the amount, the design unit, and the material. The price will be displayed automatically. You can choose to add threads and tapped holes, inserts, marks, and if it's an assembly or not. Take into account the minimum thickness allowed by the chosen technology. If you uncheck the box, PCBWare will contact you if there is a risk of failure related to the thickness. Once everything completed, click Submit Request and it's done. I want to get rid of the roughness first by giving it a little bit of sanding, that way the polishing will be way easier. Next I'm going to work on the aluminum and I think this one will be pretty easy to work on. This one is wonderful, <laughs> I like it. And indeed this one was really easy to work on because aluminum is a softer material. And as you can see it has a straight shape so I just had to put it on the drill and let it turn while sanding. And it helps a lot that this one has smooth pattern compared to the others. Okay, here they are all polished and I'm really happy that they will perfectly match my tool head. I did almost everything by hand so I had little trouble getting a perfect finish on the stainless steel but obviously it will be faster and easier with the right equipment. The aluminum one was the easiest to work on, the stainless steel the worst, and I'll say the titanium in the between. And I made three tools that helped me a lot with the sanding, so if you want to use them, you'll find links down below. Well, we are at the end, and I hope it was interesting for you all to see what raw and polished SLM prints can look like. And I'm so grateful to PCBWay for giving me that opportunity to test their SLM print services. Now I will leave you all on some printing videos with heat shields, so I'll see you all in the next one.